Welcome everyone to an informal conversation here at the Institute for Technology Assessment and Systems Analysis with Professor Hans Lake. It's stimulated by the interest of Elena Gruba, who is a PhD student from Lviv, Ukraine, studying here philosophy technology in Germany. By the benefit of Zoom technology, we are also pleased to be collaborating with faculty in philosophy at Northeastern University in Xinjiang, China, to make this conversation available to interested scholars and students in China. So welcome to everyone in China as well. I can see we have something like 50 people signed on. It's not possible in a short introduction to do justice to the life and work of Professor Dr. Hans Lang. It is also not really necessary to do so here in Karlsruhe, where he is Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at Karlsruhe Technological University after serving as professor for more than 30 years and is known as the only philosopher in history who was also a gold medal Olympian. He was on the gold medal German rowing team in the 1960 Summer Olympics. Professor Link has also been a visiting professor in Argentina, Austria, Brazil, Chile, Hungary, India, Japan, Norway, Russia, Switzerland, Venezuela, and the United States. In a few days, he will be going to Greece to receive his 10th honorary doctorate. We are thus most honored by him joining us this morning here at ETOS. Our focus this morning is on only one small part of Hans Link's work, his philosophy of technology. Hans Link is one of the most wide ranging and productive philosophers, not just in Germany, but in the world. His thinking and research extends well beyond the philosophy of engineering and technology into mathematics, sports science, sociology, psychology, cybernetics, social philosophy, philosophy of science, logic, epistemology, and cultural theory. But this morning, Elena Gruba wants to talk with him about philosophy of engineering and technology, most particularly philosophy of engineering and technology in Germany, and its and his contribution. Can you help me with this interview? Yes. You have a copy? I do have a copy. Um, here. It is contribution or relationship to philosophy of technology globally. Professor Link was a founding member of the first extended engagement between philosophers and engineers, which took place in the Society of German Engineers after the Second World War. This philosophy engineering engagement established the possibility of a much more pragmatic and socially pertinent philosophy of technology than was at the same time in Germany being mooted in the ontological meditations of Martin Heidegger. Hans Link was also from the 1960s engaged with and a contributor to the emergence of philosophy of technology in the United States. In the 1970s, his work was one of my own primary guides for learning about philosophy of technology in a way that could be productive for engagement with professional engineers. His influence in the early efforts of the Society for Philosophy and Technology to reach out beyond its formative American context helped internationalize SPT activities and institutionalization. Now, in today's conversation, we can say that Professor uh, Lank is helping to extend philosophy of technology to Ukraine through uh, Elena uh and through Zoom emerging as well with philosophy of technology in China. He has been to, has been to China most recently at the World Congress of Philosophy in Beijing in 2015. So welcome to everybody from China, welcome to everybody here in Germany, and welcome to Professor Lin. Thank you. So Elena, I uh, leave you to explain uh, what you have been doing and- uh, uh, Can I have a copy of that interview? <clears throat> Thank you. So. Oh. already um, I'm from Ukraine and my topic is uh, topical my PhD is the German philosophy of technology 
So I arrived here full of interests and full of questions and my colleagues, Giovanni Figo and uh, Ike Duval, they recommend me to, to get the answers from uh, first hands and uh, help me to shape this uh, interview, uh, interview, this questionnaire, questioning uh, so that we have now. Uh, this is uh, 23 questions uh, separated uh, on few blocks like linguistic block, historical block, anthropological block. And uh, I already did interview with, uh, with four person, persons, with um, Rafaela Finkelbrun, uh, Armin Grunwald, and uh, Alfred Norman, and uh, with Hans Lang by text. But uh, now we have, I have a huge um, possibility to speak with uh, Professor Hans uh, like here in the one room. <laughs> so it's a very important situation for me. Uh, and thank you, you agreed to, to, uh, to participate in my, um, my interview. Uh, so first, I wanted to start with uh, kind of personal questions, yeah, to be a bit warning uh, our audi auditorium. <laughs> so uh, how or why did technology uh, become the subject of your philosophical interest? Yeah, well, this is the, the, can I show you the, the which block I use, okay? The new one is easy for you. Uh -huh. So this one, I started with the <laughs> So, uh, how and why technology became the subject of your philosophical interest? How it uh, happened with you? Well, I did my graduate work in part in Berlin at the Technical University of Berlin. And so uh, it was necessary to deal with the questions <laughs> interesting for the because interesting for the uh, engineers and and and, uh, and natural scientists and uh, and, and I therefore uh, try to deal with uh, many of the questions in these fields, particularly uh, dealing with some interdisciplinary seminars for for engineering students uh, on. A philosophy of science and how it relates to philosophy of technology and and uh, that was I think the, the first uh, introduction and when I got the call to Karlsruhe the same I applied uh, because he is also a technical university and at that time it had the name of Karlsruhe University in uh, brackets uh, technical High school, <laughs> you mean uh, technical university? So uh, I also, from the beginning, uh, tried to get involved into some other interdisciplinary connections with the mathematicians because I'm a, a major uh, student, was a major student of mathematics also, and uh, I even proved a little theorem somewhere in the group theory and so on. And uh, uh, the mathematician took me out as, as a second member of their faculty. Uh, but I was in the faculty of social sciences and uh, economics. And, and so science at that, that time, and economics then uh, uh, split off and, and we were the social scientists here, uh, including philosophy, sociology, history, uh, pedagogics and so on. That was it. And, well, uh, I tried to make friends and uh, to deliver uh, some uh, seminars and, and to, to uh, interview some seminars with uh, technology engineering professors, like Professor Hans Rumpf, who was a rector and uh, president of the university for some time, and Professor Steinbuch was a very well-known uh, cybernetics uh, professor, and and so on and so on. Uh, what's what's the description you get for, for in, in Germany? Isn't it very unusual for a professor yes. to be so interdisciplinary? Yes, yes. At that time, it was very, very, uh, yeah, outrageous somehow. 
And when I was in Berlin, I, I got a uh, 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 I got somebody who uh, uh, proposed me for me a, a chair at the Free University, which was free. And uh, some anthropologist, uh, Professor Landman, then said, as was told to me, uh, yeah, we want to uh, hire a philosopher and not an Olympian or a technology-oriented guy. <laughs> what, 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 what made you want to, what made you do interdisciplinary philosophy? Because it, like it, I was interested already in my high school time and, and very widely. And uh, in fact, I, I couldn't really uh, concentrate on just one subject matter or field. So, so I said philosophy is the widest. And I was very interested at that time in reading ethics and anthropology and so on, and reading Albert Schweitzer, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I also published about him and very much so. He also uh, yeah, published uh, uh, discussions and had discussions worldwide known about the uh, atomic uh, experiments and so on and development of the nuclear bombs and so on. Did, did you meet Schweitzer? No, no. Uh, but I visited uh, together with a friend, with a late friend, uh, sorry to say, in uh, 1989, uh, in, in, to Gabun, to his okay. Lambarene, eh? yeah. very famous. And uh, I wrote a, a booklet about that also. And uh, uh, yes, it's not available in English, it's only in German. <laughs> um, what was the, uh, what was the, the, what was the, the main challenges? Uh, in bringing your scientific uh, and philosophical research together? Because you mentioned your uh, major was like mathematics. Well, at that time, uh, technologists and engineers uh, didn't want to uh, discuss about these uh, humanistic or humanities uh, things. And, and they thought that this is, that is for Sunday mornings or something like that. <laughs> Or to, to read literature and uh, and, and, and uh, but this is uh, as we all know certainly not true. There are very intriguing questions and problems in the ethics of technology, responsibility problems, particularly which was a key point of my development. I think uh, I always had uh, an interest in uh, uh, group. Uh, responsibility, responsibility of teams, groups, and so on. And and, and uh, I even uh, uh, now <laughs> say uh, I have two topics <laughs> uh, beginning team dynamics and from team dynamics to scheme dynamics, <laughs> which is my <laughs> uh, uh, slogan about my philosophical approach of scheme methodological, uh, well, model building and, and uh, uh, philosophizing. And <clears throat> let's speak a bit about Karlsruhe. Uh, as a, which uh, um, has there in Karlsruhe ever been a school of philosophy of technology, like um, in the sense of uh, school of thoughts? What the, what the place of Karlsruhe is in the general- Karlsruhe, yeah, I yeah, understand yeah, Karlsruhe. what you mean. Sorry, this is my Eastern European Also, yes. Well, uh, uh, I was very lucky uh, to uh, be introduced here to to uh, uh, for a lecture and qualifying lecture <laughs> as came out uh, to Karlsruhe University at that time, and uh, my pre predecessor who was my most active student in the beginnings and lived for four years, Professor Moser, an Austrian of uh, uh, Tirol, and uh, he uh, uh, well, uh, was uh, retiring, and so I was then appointed as his successor. And, this, and then I uh, even uh, very 
early I started to together with uh, some people from the tech, technical departments to run uh, interdisciplinary seminars on ethics and philosophy of technology and so on of uh, ethics and economics a uh, long time before this was some kind of uh, usual or common in uh, other fields and studies. No? And uh, this is, uh, was very interesting and I learned much uh, very much about that, and uh, not only they, but me too. And I, as a member of the mathematics uh, 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 department, also I uh, did some seminars on you know, the methodology of mathematics and logics and so on. And uh, and even the synthesis, I even uh, remember that I uh, ran a seminar because I had uh, an introduction uh, to Gödel's theory and, and to logic by Wolfgang Stegmüller, who was a very famous uh, philosopher of science in Germany in Kiel University. He was a visiting professor there uh, when I was studying there. And uh, Paul Lorenzen was a mathematician and, and a logician who uh, developed a so-called operative foundation of logics, kind of intuitionism and so on. He uh, also uh, influenced me uh, in that sense. And so I tried to transfer that to Karlsruhe because it was totally unknown here. Right? And uh, well, uh, my, my predecessor, Professor Moser, was very widely also interested, not only in his uh, own field, he was a the Aristotelian uh, scholar, specialist in Aristotle, and uh, uh, even when he got Sanaya, he still was able to uh, uh, quote from Aristotle in old Greek, and so <laughs> and so on. Well, he was a member also of the so-called group or team or whatever. Uh, or, of the German Engineers Union, Verein Deutscher Ingenieure, was the leading kind of uh, body uh, uh, on the project uh, uh, Man, which is human being, and technology. So, and there were some uh, philosophers, theologians, and also certainly uh, engineers taking part in that, and we worked together for some 20 years or so, and uh, even edited also a very well-known guideline for the German engineers, uh, Technikbewertung, Richtlinie Technikbewertung, and to, which appeared then in 2001, uh, a guideline to uh, the, uh, well, problems uh, of uh, uh, engineering and technology uh, addressed in particular to engineers and also to uh, practitioners. Where, where did the initiative for that come from? Mm -hmm. from? From the German Engineers Society? Did the initiative come from them to invite philosophers to help them? Or no, did yes, philosophers take the was, initiative? Yeah, they, they, and they, they, they are based in Düsseldorf and, and uh, and the, in the next door was uh, was Bonn and and, and uh, 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 Cologne, Cologne, and uh, they uh, asked the philosopher there, uh, namely uh, 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 some of the Bonner, uh, Bonn uh, philosophers. Kluxen was his name. He was a traditional philosopher of. Uh, St. Thomas uh, uh, orientation, but he uh, took uh, part and, 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 and had uh, also for some time, uh, together with some other uh, professor from Cologne, uh, the uh, chairmanship of that group, Mensch und Technik, as a human man and technology. And Moser was also there uh, because he was uh, one at a technical university. And so he was very active there and also did a lot of things, uh, even uh, running also seminars together with Steinbuch 
and myself later on and so on. Right? And uh, so uh, we came together in uh, that uh, respect and uh, edited very many uh, brochures of the meetings with from the world how much, and how, much huh? how much impact did that work have, do you think, on engineering? Yeah, not not really, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, so we uh, tried to develop a certain kind of guideline for the engineers. And this Richtlinie guideline, uh, technology evaluation, as the uh, English expression, Technik Bewertung, uh, uh, became a great success after very considerable difficulties for in the engineering society. What, what, what do you mean by success? Yeah, it was accepted as an official guideline. By, of, by the German Engineering by Society? By or by the engineering, that's by the Verein Deutscher Engineer. Okay. Uh, after 2001, when it was uh, uh, published. And, and also later on, we also developed uh, uh, a so-called ethics code. <laughs> For engineers, or uh, and uh, which uh, was even translated to English, but to a very bad English. So, <laughs> and uh, by I don't know somebody, and uh, they also had a, a different philosophers leading that group of engineers of uh, mentioned technic and or uh, the engineers group on. Uh, uh, humanity and technology, namely, for instance, the very influential philosopher and technologist, Günther Rohpohl, who was an engineer by training and uh, uh, did his dissertation as an engineer in Stuttgart and uh, came to Karlsruhe and uh, ran the uh, general studies department here for some time and, and habilitated with me and, and so on. And, and uh, later on, then uh, did, did Robo, Robo teach philosophy? philosophy? Yeah. Did Robo teach philosophy? Was he a professor of philosophy? He was uh, a uh, first of all a docent, okay, and then uh, later on a professor, uh, and uh, also a professor I think, of uh, uh, philosophy, yes. Where, where was Ropo Professor Philosophy? Here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, with, you, with you, with you in Karlsruhe. Huh? With you in Karlsruhe. Yes. yes. And uh, he did a subletation thesis with me and so on, particularly on technology and, and the development of technology and uh, automatisms, where, where his uh, doctoral thesis and topic. Right? And Friedrich Rapp came from. Uh, uh, Technical University of Berlin. Did you know him in Berlin? Uh, we were colleagues together. Okay, Berlin. you and Rapp. He, 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 both of us were assistant professors or assistants yeah. and scientific assistants. Yeah. <laughs> we are not professors, but and uh, uh, we had a very good friends, and he is still in Dortmund. He changed and later on to Dortmund, also to a technical university. Is uh, retired now by an hour. We also had a, a, a later uh, professor at the Technical University after Professor Hübner uh, was retired, retiring. Professor Hans Poser, who also uh, died last year, the year before last. And uh, he was also very much interested, interested in the philosophy of the natural sciences and the history of that. What they are doing now, uh, this uh, association of German engineers, this VDI, they still works with the philosophers? They keep no. this tradition? No, I don't know that they are still, the, the group doesn't exist. No. And you don't keep in touch with them? No. No, they. Uh, I, I I got some some medal or whatever of the engineers uh, year 10, 10, 12 years ago or even more, and uh, then I uh, didn't hear very much of that. What What would you? What would be your explanation for what happened? Why hasn't 
the connection between engineering engineers and philosophers continue? Yeah, because we uh, did our guideline, uh, we did finish our guideline, and this is, uh, but the problems continue. The guidelines uh, don't solve all the problems, right? <laughs> the, the, the philosophical problems of advanced engineering continue. Well, don't solve problems. They they uh, evolve and develop new questions. On, right. On, so so and uh, the engineers uh, were not very much interested anymore. And although the problems of uh, ethics and technology and of technology became even much more uh, pressing and uh, in the late latest uh, decades and then particularly now also with uh, uh, IE uh, AI and and so on and artificial intelligence and the problems of responsibility and that. Uh, or the problem of the responsibility in the, the, in the industry, uh, technology, but te technological industry in particular. But, but, let's let's so shift. So I a got bit uh, many so invitations you, to. to you said that ethics and responsibility is one of your primary themes. Well, so let's talk about that just a little bit. How would you relate your analysis and, and concept of responsibility? to that uh, Hans Jonas, who is the man sort of often identified with the concept of, of responsibility? Uh, that's a good question, because uh, I uh, was the first in Germany to invite Hans Jonas here for a lecture, okay. and also for a group on uh, of the German Science Foundation. So you, you invited Hans Jonas here to Karlsruhe? He was here for a lecture, yes, and then uh, not a lecture, on, but a, a, you, were the, you were the first person to do that. You, you invited him I to Germany. The first person uh, to invite him to Germany and to particularly to that group uh, of the uh, foundation in Bad Homburg, uh, yeah. the Reimers Foundation, where he also took part and has also published. Uh, uh, discussion and but also I detected or discovered by chance that he uh, had the same problems as me in uh, regard of uh, humanitarian responsibilities and so on. For instance, uh, uh, I uh, published my little book, Pragmatic Reason, uh, Pragmatische Vernunft in 1979, before Hans Jonas' book in 1979 was published in, uh, in, in Germany. Right? And then later on, only I think five years later in the United States, not in English. And uh, uh, so I wrote to Hans Jonas and invited him to this uh, Reimer Stiftung and he uh, showed up there and it was very nice. And so, so we got into contact. And also later on, there was uh, an initiative uh, of uh, a German music professor on the music uh, 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 college here in Karlsruhe, Professor Wolfgang Jan, who uh, it was related to the Norwegian uh, 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 Academy of uh, the Northern uh, uh, Region, and they, they uh, uh, organized always uh, uh, every year a uh, summer session in uh, the Lofoots, the Algos. And I was uh, invited there and, and also. Uh, Hans Jonas was invited there, uh, particularly of a proposition by uh, Karl Apel of Frankfurt University, who was also uh, related uh, by his wife to uh, 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 Hans Jonas. And uh, well, would, would you say that you agree with Hans Jonas' heuristics of fear? Uh, in a way, yes. But uh, 
I am a little bit more optimistic <laughs> than not that, uh, let's say, uh, basic uh, fundamentalistic, uh, but uh, his, uh, uh, his book, Das Prinzip Verantwortung, uh, uh, was uh, taking up uh, some of my uh, uh, theses about the you know, the more uh, you have responsibility for actions, the the more also rises on the uh, impact and and so on of ethics and uh, you know, the necessity of uh, uh, getting a human uh, 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 problems in the perspective of. Uh, Worldwide responsibility. I have a copy of that uh, uh, whole thing, thing with me. Well, you, so you would continue to argue that that we need to practice that we should be practicing some kind of heuristics of fear to uh, deal with. Not I mean, for him, it was primarily nuclear weapons at first. Uh, that, uh, and. Uh, I think there's one of the articles is on Hans Jonas' uh, studies, uh -huh. uh, but not on his uh, principle of ethics because it was not had not appeared at that time. But about his uh, responsibility of groups, team groups, and so on. And uh, it, that is also in that book. Here, I think what is it? Uh, 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 what what would you say the relate me the I think of one of your primary on ethical uh, questions of human experiments. I don't say I think oh. one of your primary uh, uh, arguments has to do with with Schweitzer. You mentioned Schweitzer before, and I know I've read uh, I haven't read the book that you talked about, but I've read a number of your articles about the importance of. Uh, the, uh, the ethics of life is what uh, protection of life for all yeah. kinds of life for yeah, Schweitzer. Yeah, yeah. But Hans Jonas stresses only human life. That's right. Okay. And so would you argue that Hans Jonas is too limited by stressing only the importance of protecting human life, whereas Schweitzer is more general, protecting life as a whole? That's right, it was uh, so in the beginning, but Hadzionas changed his mind. Uh, and particularly when he attended this Lofoten meeting uh, in uh, where I was also. Uh -huh. and, and so we just had a discussion with one another on e ecology and ethics, and uh, particularly also on, uh, well, uh, non human beings. <laughs> and. Uh, but that didn't uh, affect his uh, well-known book right? because that what had appeared already then. I don't think any any other philosopher that in the in the field of philosophy of technology has ever uh, utilized Schweitzer the way you have. I mean, I think that's pretty unique, isn't it? Uh, yes, in a way, yes, yes. But, but there is an, an article in the American Encyclopedia of uh, Technology, Science, and Ethics uh -huh. uh, on Schweitzer. Yes. And that was written by me and Klaus Günzler, a late friend, uh, who was the editor, later editor of the posthumous works of Schweitzer. We ran uh, two seminars together here and at the uh, Educational University here for two semesters on his uh, posthumous papers. Uh, the, the big, uh, the posthumous, big text, posthumous papers of manuscripts. And he, uh, Günzler, edited this um, his four volumes. Zürcher mm -hmm. is a, a Swiss uh, uh, fan of Schweitzer who typed the whole thing. So it was difficult uh, at that time still. Uh, and uh, uh, but Günther and me did the selection of the uh, things, uh, and uh, we had also very many 
uh, discussions with uh, Schweizer people, and, and so they were very interested in that these problems, since Schweizer had a uh, very well known radio radio uh, addresses worldwide on the uh, nuclear bomb tests and so on. And, uh, and is, it, you, is Schweizer still? In any way influential in philosophy in Germany? It was, he was never very influential. Mm -hmm. And then very many people uh, uh, were not very fond of him. And uh, I think he was not very well known. There's one exception. And I, when I was studying in Freiburg, there was an ethicist, Hans Reinhardt, who is a phenomenologist of ethics. And, uh, he uh, also liked Schweitzer, and, uh, and uh, in a way, we talked uh, about him also, and I did a seminar with him, and, and he influenced me also mm -hmm. in that direction. Can I read, uh, uh, moved, uh, sorry, not scared to, to move ahead, and I want to ask both of you about technology assessment. About what? About technology assessment. Because this is, yes, yes. Yeah. this is the thing that I first hear, he, uh, heard here in Germany. Mm -hmm. I spoke about it with Armin Grunwald, and, and he explained me a bit about it. But as I understood, this is American thing, right? This comes from United States, then comes to, to Germany. And now it's in Germany exists the Bureau of uh, uh, Technology Assessment in Bundestag. So it's important things. Philosophers have a job near Bundestag and work with ethics, right? Yes. So can we, can we, I mean, it's kind of, they are followers of VDI, I mean, what they did before with philosophers, like when scientists and researchers works with, work with philosophers in really applied uh, to topics. Yeah, in a way, our guideline, Technik Bewertung, technology evol evaluation eh, was some kind of Bible for the technology assessment kind of thing. Right? Because that's uh, evaluating technology as assessment is the same pretty much. And so, and then very many of the rules we developed there are uh, explicitly more uh, worked out in the technology assessment uh, kind of thing. Right? And uh, I even got a call here to, to head or to be a chairman of this group in, uh, in, in the in, in northern campus of now of uh, KIT. Uh, but uh, I couldn't take that because uh, I would have been forced to give up my professorship here. Uh, it was usual for the Finances that they had both professorships there and here. But here, the, the cultural ministry didn't want that. All the, I don't, I don't know. And then I, 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 I was flying in as a visiting professor in the United States in, in uh, Massachusetts here for the interview and so on. And I got that uh, call, but I, would have been obliged to uh, give up my professorship here and say that that's nonsense. Right? And uh, I wanted to be a philosopher still, <laughs> not just working on uh, such a long ethics of technology alone. Right? In, in the United States, like Elena says, the, the drive for creating the Office of Technology Assessment in the 1970s the, the stimulus for that was not from philosophy. It was from politics. That's right. Uh, it, it was a political issue. Now, now here also a little bit uh, with this group at the uh, uh, nuclear center, as it was called here, the uh, Kernforschungszentrum, mm -hmm. as was the ITAS before, the, the, uh, the, the big kind of thing. North, yeah, now it's North Campus North. Uh, in general, right? And, was, there, was there a connection they, between they, they are they were specialized uh, particularly for nuclear technology, I think, and and, uh, and uh, but they extended their the, the purview then particularly 
in the late uh, latest uh, in the last uh, decade, like after Germany gave up the nuclear uh, energy. Yeah, uh, given your strong pragmatic orientation, yeah. uh, did you ever make an argument for the institutionalization of technology assessment? Did you ever, did you ever have an argument in support of something like creating something like a Kuchi Office of Technology Assessment? Prior to its creation, mm, yeah, we did. We discussed these problems in our uh, fine uh, engineer group. In our and uh, in uh, fact, uh, did some kind of a yeah, well, technology assessment uh, studies and and papers, mm -hmm. uh, also asking. Uh, engineers to come and give us uh, uh, an outlook of their work and, and so on. And then we discussed it. And there are many uh, brochures on that. Uh, That's a little bit different, though, than creating an institution like the Office of Technology Assessment or That's like right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And in a way, uh, also later on, uh, when uh, these uh, philosophy group or the ETAS at the uh, northern campus uh, existed, uh, I think then only uh, what the, the uh, uh, call by the German parliament uh, to give, uh, give uh, develop a certain kind of bureau of technology assessment. Mm -hmm. And there were I think that first of all, the Professor Parson was uh, was the head here and after the call, which I didn't uh, accept, and uh, also uh, uh, later on, uh, then uh, uh, he he was involved in the development also of the Bureau of uh, Technology Assessment. Did, did you ever have anything to do with the U.S. Office of Technology Assessment? Because the OTA would invite uh, philosophers and social scientists to do uh, study groups. Did, were you ever involved with, with the U.S. I, OTA? I uh, visited some uh, meetings in the U.S. Okay. Uh, with uh, technology assessment topics. Okay. Particularly in New York, where uh, is also well known, also published in English and German and so on. And uh, Paul Durbin was a, an initiated person there in the technology kind of group, but, uh, but I think he is also not an official uh, technology uh, assessment officer. Could you say something about your relation to Paul Durbin? Because Durbin was so influential. I mean, he sort of created the, the Society for Philosophy and Technology. Yeah, I was a member of that and, and, uh, and uh, well, participated in many volumes. Uh -huh. He edited and uh, yeah, he was a relatively good friend, I think. And I had another friend in U.S. politics. <laughs> By chance, as was the uh, German uh, 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 philosophy professor of Davidson College, who was also the head of the planning of the uh, great collider in, in uh, North Carolina, the, uh, which un uh, unfortunately was not uh, 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 finished. <laughs> the, the grand and Earl McCormickle wrote a, a very influential study on uh, uh, theory of metaphors and also on engineering problems. He was also a kind of, uh, well, engineer, had a, a minor kind of uh, grade, and, and uh, he was a good friend of mine by chance because our daughter applied for uh, a scholarship at the last year of her school to the U.S. and she ended up uh, in Davidson, uh, and uh, and 
uh, after some trials had uh, by chance uh, uh, been taken in the, to the family of McCormick's and so on. So we, so we got good friends. And he also participated in some of the engineering uh, uh, sessions uh, in, in New York, I think. He was uh, and also uh, in Germany and, and he attended also a German Congress of Philosophy where I was uh, president of the German Philosophical Society. That was also on some kind of uh, technological topic. Can we just... Uh, I did uh, some... Uh, uh, at, at many uh, German congresses of philosophy, I was all, all, always asked to deal with uh, the section of philosophy of technology and uh, engineering and so on. Uh, once, uh, for instance, in 2003, and we had a congress there in, uh, what was it? no, it was uh, earlier, I think in 1993. No, yeah, I, I, we had a congress there at the Technical University of Berlin, uh, Günther Abel, who was, uh, was also a philosopher uh, in, and still is in uh, uh, the Technical University of Berlin. Uh, who had to add this, uh, was a chairman, you know, together with uh, Hans Tosa. He was, a, and, and uh, I myself uh, were, you know, uh, staging this congress in, at the Technical University of Berlin, the, the German Congress of Philosophy. And there was certainly also a, 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 at least one, uh, uh, a section on philosophy of technology where I was asked to, to give the main paper. Uh, okay. So, you mean I should ask it yeah. from us? Carl asked me to ask you. <laughs> what is your most important philosophical contribution to philosophy of technology? What do you think? <laughs> it will be the part of my PhD thesis. Pardon? It will be the part of my PhD thesis. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I answered these questions also in my answers to your interview. I didn't think it out. Where are the others? <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, I think uh, I was always uh, interested in methodology and philosophy of science because I came from mathematics and uh, also uh, did some uh, uh, work in the philosophy of science of physics, uh, although I'm not a, a physicist. But I was a mathematician and I had, uh, for instance, uh, the privilege uh, to run a seminar here in this university for physicists, docents, docents, on theory of relativity and the mathematics and, and so on, because at that time they didn't have that in their usual studies in physics. But do you consider that I, I a contribution had... to philosophy of technology? Um, Was do you consider that a contribution? The philosophy of technology. No, no, that's uh, <laughs> the first story. And uh, then uh, I had also here seminars together with Hans Wolf, who was very widely interested. He was in civil engineering, no, in uh, uh, mechanical engineering. And uh, uh, what is the name of English now? University, he was a very influential, was also rector of the university and also in the uh, uh, in in the research foundation in Germany and so on. And he was very much interested in uh, questions of responsibility of ethics, uh, of in ethics and ethics and technology. And uh, we had some seminars together here for the whole semester and or, or even more and uh, then uh, I think that uh, the topic of responsibility 
particularly not only individual responsibility for technical uh, developments and uh, innovations and the social impacts and uh, uh, where, where I think uh, a problem which I then uh, took up and uh, discussed uh, for a decade or two decades or so. And together then with uh, Günter Ropol and with the uh, study group there of the Verein der Deutschen Ingenieure. So you'd say your, your, note, your concept of responsibility for by both in, individuals and groups in teams. technology. Yeah, yeah. technology yeah, is, and is one of your key contributions. One, yes. And I think also uh, the uh, attempt to uh, study uh, the uh, Wissenschaftstheorie, the philosophy of science problems of technology, the, the, the methods uh, the engineers took up, and so on. Right. Because what do you think of the, the social construction of technology uh, sociologists uh, who want to unpack the black box of what goes on in the laboratory? Are you sympathetic to that approach to uh, the philosophy of science? I think it's necessary to, to take that up, but I think they are too single-minded or too, in a way. You can, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it was, I think, uh, Günther Ropol who developed the concept of uh, so that the uh, technical uh, developments, particularly innovative ones, are not only technical but social total problems and political problems, socio-political problems. And uh, the questions are also then uh, in that uh, sense uh, important in a wide, much wider uh, view than uh, just in uh, the university or in uh, uh, technology or engineering science. And uh, so uh, I then later on uh, uh, said uh, that uh, we have not only uh, socio-technical uh, problems and uh, I think uh, philosophical problems of that, uh, but also uh, ecological problems. And then I think talked about uh, socio-eco-technological problems and uh, that we have to just discuss that in a certain kind of systematic way together in interdisciplinary uh, approaches, uh, being seminars or whatever, and uh, uh, joint planning and, and uh, even also uh, accompanying uh, uh, groups of ethical questions in uh, laboratories and also uh, uh, technical equipments and uh, even so. So I, I, I'm talking in that little paper I, uh, that he had on uh, of set problems, socio-eco-social, uh, socio-eco-technical systems and the respective analysis of that. That is, I think, also one uh, point uh, to raise. And uh, particularly also then the, the question uh, which Peter French in the United States uh, uh, inspired me to uh, on uh, not only individual, but also on uh, group responsibility and, mm -hmm. and so on. It's, uh, let me please um, let me please do a little anthropological tour now because I have a questions uh, about anthropology of philosophy now okay? uh, because this is also my uh, my interest. May I do that? So this is like the next uh, block of my of my interview. yes. as I know, you have a text about anthropology and technology. Right, you yeah. sent me some uh, articles about it, so it's really... Oh, I have uh, many articles yes, on that, and then particularly articles. also 
for a box. Yeah, yes, yes. And, uh, but they're German. The, the most important one is uh, uh, the flexible vielfachwesen, the flexible uh, being of uh, well, plurality, so to speak. And, uh, and uh, this is a big, big one. There are three chapters uh, on uh, new developments of uh, technology, technology, technology questions and problems under the purview of philosophy of science and also anthropology. And uh, I think I have it not with me. So uh, with the chapter 18 or 10 to 20 or something like that on uh, traditional technology. Uh, Hans Sachse was an influential person also in the VDE group. Hans Jonas also, mm -hmm. and, and so on. I discussed all of that also with my perspective of kind of a, uh, an anthropology of the flexible being. That means that uh, the human being is not only be to, to be characterized by just one trait, ratio, for instance, or uh, ray, uh, or a reason, you know, the reason and being, and not only also the socio-political being that Aristotle said, make them both uh, go back to Aristotle, but uh, many more. Uh, 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 characteristic points uh, or characteristics are in favor of uh, distinguishing uh, the human being from other beings. Right? And I even had a long list of 330 points uh, characterizing uh, the human being as a certain kind of characteristic feature in that book, and also in, in a book on inter interpretation of uh, anthropology in German, and this other one is also in German, and uh, uh, the third one is a certain kind of uh, short part of that uh, creative plurality, creative plurality, and uh, but they are not uh, translated to, uh, but uh, some articles are now translated to uh, uh, to my uh, one of the latest uh, books in Spanish, I did. this just appeared uh, some weeks ago uh, on the anthropology of of, uh, uh, <clears throat> of uh, the human being. Did you work with uh, ideas of uh, Ernst Kapp, uh, uh, Helen? Uh, Plasner, Blumenberg. Did you work with uh, with their ideas for building your uh, vision of uh, anthropology of technology? Uh, Blumenberg, yeah. yes. And uh, who was the first was he? Uh, Ernst Kapp. Uh, Ernst Kapp, yeah, yeah. certainly. certainly yeah. Uh, Arnold yeah. Helen, sorry. Yeah, 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 certainly. He was the, the <laughs> yes, <laughs> ancient pioneer in the 19th century, certainly. They are the main figures. For me, like from for anthropology of technology, right? In Germany. Yes, in a way, uh, he was a pioneer, right? and then also certainly in the United States, he was in the United States, and even Europe. Okay, yeah. And, uh, and did you use some of their ideas? Yes, in a way, uh, I used it as a elongation of the uh, what it has human uh, uh, arms and so on, uh, by machines and so on. Okay. Yeah. And also Arnold Galen, who was an, an important uh, uh, anthropologist, influential in Germany since the 1940s. And uh, he uh, took up some ideas by Helmut Plessner, who uh, was also very influential in uh, combining biological approaches uh, with anthropology and uh, philosophy. An organic kind of things of philosophy of, of the human being and, and uh, was very influential then also for phenomenology and, and so on. He, in a way, inspired Galen and others. And, and I am in that tradition also. Right now. Uh, 
not to uh, be silent about Ernst Cassirer. I think he was one of the most important figures in uh, anthropology, ophthalmology. Uh, his essay on man is uh, fantastic. Uh, really, is one one of the most influential papers uh, pieces. Also, first of all, uh, published in the United States, essay on man, and uh, then later on uh, edited also in Germany. So, who would you say is the has been the most influential on you, and then who has continued your work? After you, who do you think you've had the most influence on as regard to the question of philosophical anthropology? Uh, who before is most influential and who have you influenced the most? Uh, that's difficult. <laughs> I mentioned all, some of the people already. But uh, uh, first of all, I think uh, the study of Kant. Kant. Both his theoretical as his so-called practical philosophy was very influential for my views. And I think that uh, this is a very uh, uh, telling, like uh, my habilitation thesis was on the development of logical uh, judgment forms, as they call it, logical constants, mm -hmm. as we say. Uh, uh, and it started with Kant's uh, attempt, uh, uh, reconstructed by Klaus Reich, in a very influential dissertation in the 1930s and so on. And then... Uh, that, that's really interesting to me because I would have never suspected Kant of being, you know, I don't know your work that well, but I wouldn't have expected Kant to be a primary influence. I would have expected... The, in, the in general, uh, in Britain, Methodological philosophy, yes, I think that's the most influential figure. And uh, because he had also what I call a certain kind of methodological term. This philosophy is not traditional metaphysics and not uh, some kind of other, uh, as uh, often seen. But uh, we can say that uh, he had a certain kind of uh, you're, you're a position to my scheme interpretationist approach uh -huh. because uh, his categories and also his uh, uh, logical forms uh -huh. uh, were, were, I think, developed uh, from our brain. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. okay. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, but he took it to. Uh, Strictly, I think he, uh, that they are somehow imposed on us by nature. But I think that it's more uh, not only by nature, but also by the necessities of step-by-step uh, uh, -step, uh, progressions, mm -hmm. uh, operations, formal operations, and when you discuss formal operations uh, and their very uh, formal structure, then you can already get at the intuitionist logics right? uh, of Kapara and others. Right? And, and uh, the only thing lacking is the tertium non dato, the, the, uh, all that. Uh, uh, double negation is, is, is uh, affirmative, affirmation, and uh, that uh, that is, I think, the only thing you have to add to get a certain kind of classical logic, right? uh, of the traditional classical logic. And later on, some other uh, developments are occurring uh, up to uh, <laughs> uh, probability logics and. Uh, uh, with uh, 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 infinite uh, values of truths and so on. And it's uh, a mathematical uh, discipline by itself, you now mathematical logics. Huh? And they don't want uh, even uh, philosophical articles anymore. Huh? <laughs> they just. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, who was one of the next? This was. Uh, also, 
uh, when I went to Peel University, uh, a young docent whom I uh, uh, listened to, Kurt Hübner, who was uh, uh, in, in Kiel University. And also at the same time, there was Paul Lorenzen who developed this operative logics. And I uh, attended both. And uh, there was a visiting professor also, as I mentioned, already mentioned, uh, Wolfgang Stegenmüller, who ran a seminar on Gödel's papers and Gödel's, uh, Gödel's theorems. And uh, I attended that, and uh, I would say that these are the most influential persons on that side, right? Hübner, uh, Lorenzen, Steckmüller, right? And uh, on the anthropological uh, scenery, I think, uh, well, I would say uh, uh, Lesnar, Galen, uh, well, and this group in Frankfurt uh, of the Reimer Stiftung, uh, together with uh, Marquardt, Otto Marquardt, and uh, uh, yeah, Hans Sachse was also very influential. He wrote a very well known anthropology of technology in German. Right? And, uh, and that was uh, one reason why I took up the Topic of anthropology of technology also, right? and I and I detect uh, discovered then also for me Ernst Cassirer, certainly who was a so-called new Kantian in a way, mm -hmm. but a much different, more differentiated one, right? and that uh, he also is a certain kind of uh, methodologist dealing with uh, not only traditional philosophy, but also with modern approaches like uh, theory of relativity and quantum theory even. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ran also seminars as physicist about the methodology of quantum theory a uh, uh, long time ago and so on. And even in my book, it's an English book, by the way, I think the most important English book I have published Grasping Reality, which appeared in Singapore uh, 2003. That was one of the, my, my most important books. Uh, the, the main uh, chapter at the end is on quantum theory and uh, the problems of quantum theory. And, and uh, there is an attachment also in a, a long annex on philosophy of technology uh, in that book. Unfortunately, it is here not well known because it's rather expensive. <laughs> and maybe, uh, okay, sorry for. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to mention another book, which was just. Uh, what were you asking? It's okay. She has, she's wanting to get another question in. I want to, yes, I'm sorry, but I want to a bit uh, push the, the process. Uh, because we have a little time uh, uh, left. So I want to ask you really important questions now. Oh, uh. Uh, because I want to, uh, first, I want to say that your name is really important name in, oh. uh, in Ukraine when we study philosophy of technology. We have really little number of uh, translations, unfortunately, your work. Uh -huh. Only we have uh, like Russian translations, right? But your name is really important. Uh, and my supervisor, he is really happy that I'm here now and a bit jealous, I guess. <laughs> but uh, so that's what I want. To, that's what I wanted to say for a long time. Yes. And my question is, what advice you would you would give to young philosophers of technology who now try to thinking about technology, try to thinking about uh, anthropology of technology, ethics uh, of technology, and so on. Which the main problematic would you recommend to focus on? At the time being, or in Ukraine, especially? In Ukraine, so oh. I have interest, yes. Discussion about the ethical questions of war technology. Yeah, it's a good discussion. And the implementation of it in yes. war and, and, or whatever. 
Yeah, I, I had a. I am still the acting president, so-called acting president of uh, the German Russian Society of uh, Technology. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to not think about it. <laughs> and and uh, technical science and uh, philosophy of technology. And uh, very influential was, I think, uh, 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 early visit to the philosophy department of the uh, of Moscow the Academy. In the Academy of Moscow, there were the critical philosophers who would not be allowed to teach at universities. They gathered, so to speak, and I uh, was there, and this was very interesting. And uh, uh, in 1990, 1989 or so, indeed, uh, I don't know, in the, in the winter time was it? Like, and and uh, since then, uh, I met also there a young uh, assistant professor in in uh, uh, Moscow, uh, and uh, the the chief of the department, who was Professor Stubbin. And who was uh, not a Ukrainian, but a uh, Belarus uh, professor, and uh, uh, a young docent was Vitaly Gorokov. Have you heard of him? Vitaly Gorokov he was a philosopher of technology and engineering. He studied Engelmeyer and so on in, in Russia and in the problems of also uh, methodological questions uh, from. Uh, Chemics, uh, chemical industry, and this could, and until nanotechnology, we have a joint article on nano uh, the technology and questions. Can I send you, if you like, uh, per email or whatever? And uh, I had then the privilege to invite him as a certain kind of visiting professor to Karlsruhe, and he came. Yeah. And he was here for two and a half decades. And he, he very well uh, influenced us also, and, uh, and the other way around. I went several times to the academy sessions in, in, uh, in, uh, in Moscow and was even appointed a member, uh, external member of the uh, Russian Academy and, and so on. I also visited Poland and, and the Baltics uh, for short visiting professorships. So I invite you to visit oh, Ukraine I am a, uh, <laughs> university. I am an old and, 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 <laughs> and what about advice yeah, yeah. to us? <laughs> you. Do, can you can you give some advice? What yeah, uh, not even I mean not even uh, in Ukrainian context. Yeah lost right. technology now. What would you say? No. Don't forget the humanitarian aspects uh, of humanity. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, that uh, particularly the natural and technological sciences have to take seriously what they uh, uh, for a long time didn't want to read or even only to enjoy on, on, on holidays or whatever. And uh, namely, the ethical and the responsibility questions, in particularly when uh, discussed uh, in practical and political matters. Yes. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for this uh, discussion. Wonderful. Mm -hmm.